Hi again, this is Andy, K4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisperer and Lesson 19 in the General Class Operator Element 3 exam course. In this lesson, we go over the G4E questions. The G4E questions go over HF mobile radio installations and emergency and battery powered operation. Which of the following emission types are permissible while operating HF mobile? Well, there's no real difference between HF mobile and any other type of amateur radio installation. You can use whatever emission type you would like to. Uh, this is an all of the above question on the exam. CW, single sideband, FM. Mobile, FM. Um, I knew a guy once who could do Morse code while riding a motorcycle. I am not going to get too attached to him. Uh, I think he's not going to be around much longer. But safety aside, you can use any emission type you'd like to on an HF mobile radio. What is alternator wine? Well, alternator whine is a tone or buzz in transmitted or received audio that varies with engine speed. And this is a bit of a technician class review. Alternator whine can be can affect your received signal, as in you'll hear something coming over your audio, but it can also affect the signal that you're transmitting as well. So whoever's listening to you can hear it as well. And it's characterized by uh, a tone that kind of matches the engine speed of the, the vehicle you're in. So as you accelerate, the tone will start to increase in pitch. As you decelerate, it'll sort of go down in pitch. So alternator whine is a tone or buzz in a transmitted or received audio that varies with engine speed. Which of the following power connections would be the best for a 100-watt HF mobile installation? A 100-watt HF mobile installation would be best to use a direct fused connection to the battery using heavy gauge wire. And 100 watts is a lot of juice for a car battery. And most links to the battery, like the cigarette lighter, or other, the, the common ground, is probably not going to handle 100 watts very well. So you want to use a heavy gauge wire that's connected directly to the battery, and you want to have a fuse in line with that, that, that wire. So a direct fuse connection to the battery using heavy gauge wire would be best for a 100 watt HF mobile installation. Why is it best not to draw the DC power for a 100 watt HF transceiver from an automobile cigarette lighter or socket? The answer is the socket's wiring may be inadequate for the current being drawn by the transceiver. Essentially, the, 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 the wiring associated with the socket isn't going to hold or support a 100 watt draw on it. So if you hook your HF mobile to a cigarette lighter, you will most likely blow the fuse if you're transmitting at 100 watts as soon as you hit the transmit button. So what you want to do, like we talked earlier, is heavy gauge wire straight to the battery with a fuse in line. But you cannot, most cigarette lighter sockets will not support a 100 watt draw. Which of the following most limits the effectiveness of an HF mobile transceiver operating in the 75 meter band? Of the possible answers, the correct one is the HF mobile antenna system is the limiting factor. And remember, the general rule with antennas is the longer the better, and a half wavelength dipole is a pretty good radiating antenna. So a half wavelength of a 75 meter band is over 100 feet long. So to get an antenna that's practical for mobile operation, it's going to be pretty short. So you're not going to get the same quality of sending or receiving signals out of a mobile antenna as you would a half wavelength dipole for 75 meters. So the antenna is the limiting factor. Which of the following is true of an emergency generator installation? The answer is the generator should be located in a well-ventilated area. And for most of the generator questions, safety is going to be the primary focus of the answer. So generators burn fuel and produce exhaust emissions. And many people have died due to carbon monoxide poisoning from generator exhaust. So you only want to operate a generator in a well-ventilated area, preferably outside. Also, make sure, even if it is outside, that the stuff isn't coming in. And remember, generators always outside. When might a lead-acid storage battery give off explosive hydrogen gas? The answer is when it's being charged. And if you remember back to the technician class stuff, we went over this before. Car, car batteries are a type of lead-acid battery. So when one of the byproducts of charging a lead-acid battery is that the battery will, will release hydrogen gas. Now, if you... Put, if you charge a battery in an area that's not well ventilated, that hydrogen gas can build up and cause an explosion, like the Hindenburg. So what you want to do when you charge a lead acid battery is keep it outside or in a well ventilated area and make sure that there's plenty of room for that hydrogen gas to escape and not build up and cause an explosion. 
What is the name of the process by which sunlight is changed directly into electricity? The name of this process is called photovoltaic conversion. So one of the ways to remember this answer is the process, this is the process that converts sunlight to electricity, and the answer is the only possible one with the word conversion in it. Also, the voltaic, that which comes in the word photovoltaic, should also be a good hint. But converting sunlight to electricity is called photovoltaic conversion. What is the approximate open circuit voltage from a modern, well-illuminated photovoltaic cell? The answer is 0.5 VDC, or volts direct current. And this is something you probably should just memorize. There's no way to tell this one different from any of the other answers. The actual voltage depends also on the size of the cell and the materials it's made of, but on average a modern cell will produce 0.5 VDC per cell. Which of these materials is used as the active element of a solar cell? The answer is doped silicon. And if you remember from the technician class exam, doped silicon is one of the materials used in making semiconductors. It's a semiconductor material. So it's the same process, doping process, they use to create P and N type materials. And essentially what a, a solar cell is, is a type of diode. So in, in this case, when the sunlight hits the doped silicon, it causes electrons to flow through it, converting the sunlight to electricity. So doped silicon is a material used as the active element in a solar cell. Which of the following is a disadvantage to using wind power as the primary source of power for an emergency station? Well, the primary disadvantage is a large energy storage system is needed to supply power when the wind is not blowing. And this is kind of a common sense answer. When wind systems, which by the way are a lot more effective than solar power systems, they still only work when the wind is blowing. So when you don't have enough wind to power the generator, you need to have that power stored in a large bank of batteries. And this is the significant disadvantage to both wind and solar systems, or excuse me, solar power systems, is that when, there's not, when it's nighttime or cloudy or the wind's not blowing, you need a large bank of batteries to store the energy in in order for them to be used as emergency systems. Which of the following is a primary reason for not placing a gasoline fuel generator inside an occupied area? Once again, we're getting into the carbon monoxide poisoning. The primary reason is that there's a danger of carbon monoxide poisoning. Keep your generators operating in well-ventilated areas, preferably outside, and make sure the exhaust coming from the generator is not blowing into a ventilation system or through a window or something that's going to trap it in your house. Carbon monoxide poisoning kills a lot of people and be careful when using a generator. Why would it be unwise to power your station by backfeeding the output of a gasoline generator into your house wiring by connecting the generator through an AC wall outlet? The answer is it might present a hazard for electrical company workers. And this is kind of a weird question um, to kind of think out, but essentially you can power your house by plugging a gasoline generator into a wall outlet. Now the problem is, is that a power worker who's thinking that you're, the power to your house is off may start tinkering with your wiring and then get an electrical shock um, since the house wiring is powered by this generator now. There are safe ways to power your house with a generator, but backfeeding it through a wall outlet is not one of them. And it's time for the G4E quiz. Take out a piece of paper, pencil, and number 1 through 13. When you're done with the quiz, you can find the answers at hamwhisperer.com under the exam answers page. Just look under the G4E section. And I'm going to go through the questions pretty quickly, so if you need more time, just pause the video and take all the time you need. So with that said, let's get started with the quiz. Question 1. Which of the following emission types are permissible while operating HF Mobile? A. CW. B. Single sideband. C. FM. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 2. What is alternator wine? A. A DC emission from the alternator. B. A constant pitch, tone, or buzz in transmitted or received audio that occurs whenever the ignition key is in the on position. C. A tone or buzz in transmitted or received audio that varies with engine speed. Or D. A mechanical sound from the alternator indicating current overload. Question 3. Which of the following power connections would be the best for a 100 watt HF mobile installation? A. A direct fused connection to the battery using heavy gauge wire. B. A direct fused connection to the alternator or generator using heavy gauge wire. 
C, a direct fused connection to the battery using resistor wire, or D, a direct fused connection to the alternator or generator using resistor wire. Question four, why is it best not to draw the DC power for a 100 watt HF transceiver from an automobile's cigarette lighter socket? A, the socket is not wired with an RF shielded power cable. B, the socket's wiring may be inadequate for the current being drawn by the transceiver. C, the DC polarity of the socket is reversed from the polarity of modern HF transceivers. Or D, the power from the socket is never adequately filtered for HF transceiver operation. Question five. Which of the following most limits the effectiveness of an HF mobile transceiver operating in the 75 meter band? A, picket fencing signal vari variation. B, the wire gauge of the DC power line to the transceiver. C, the HF mobile antenna system. Or D, FCC rules limiting mobile output power on the 75 meter band. Question six, which of the following is true of an emergency generator installation? A, the generator should be located in a well-ventilated area. B, the generator should be insulated from ground. C, fuel should be stored near the generator for rapid refueling in case of an emergency. Or D, all of these choices are correct. Question seven, when might a lead acid storage battery give off explosive hydrogen gas? A, when stored for long periods of time. B, when being discharged. C, when being charged. Or D, when not placed on a level surface. Question eight, what is the name of the process by which sunlight is changed directly into electricity? A, photovoltaic conversion, B, photon emission, C, photosynthesis, or D, photon decomposition? Question nine, what is the approximate open circuit voltage from a modern, well-illuminated photovoltaic cell? A, 0.02 VDC, B, 0.5 VDC, C, 0.2 VDC, or D, 1.38 VDC. Question 10. Which of these materials is used as the active element of a solar cell? A, doped silicon, B, nickel hydride, C, doped platinum, or D, aluminum nitride? Question 11. Which of the following is the disadvantage to using wind power as the primary source of power for an emergency station? A, the conversion efficiency from mechanical energy to electrical energy is less than 2%. B, the voltage and current ratings of such systems are not compatible with amateur equipment. C, a large energy storage system is needed to supply power when the wind is not blowing. Or D, all of these answers are correct. Question 12. Which of the following is a primary reason for not placing a gasoline fueled, fueled generator inside an occupied area? A, danger of carbon monoxide poisoning. B, danger of engine over torque. C, lack of oxygen for adequate combustion, or D, lack of nitrogen for adequate combustion. And question 13, why would it be unwise to power your station by backfeeding the output of a gasoline generator into your house wiring by connecting the generator through an AC wall outlet? A, it might present a hazard for electric company workers. B, it is prone to RF interference. C, it may disconnect your RF ground. Or D, none of the above. This is an excellent expedient. And that's it for the quiz in Lesson 19. So go to hamwhisper.com, check your answers. You can find them under the exam answers page under the G4E, G4 Echo questions. And until next time in Lesson 20, this is Andy, K4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.